Well, let's thank you, the, the organizers, particularly Professor Dinky, uh, Phil, for inviting us. It's uh, the first time in, in our case to be attending Primakov uh, readings. Also, we pay tribute to the contribution of Je Jevgeny Primakov to the theory of the international relation and the practice as well. He was one of those guys who had the opportunity to do both uh, the practice of uh, diplomacy and uh, from the academy as well. May I mark the presence of President Mbeki uh, in the room? And we appreciate the presence of all of you, considering this is the last panel of this uh, exercise. Uh, I will not uh, repeat what uh, Ambassador Saran just said on the concept. Uh, and we are talking here about the uh, Global South, which is a convention, but not a definitive uh, concept. Uh, we would like to say that uh, during the present year, uh, we have witnessed a series of events. Uh, and you mentioned, and, and Ambassador Saran mentioned, uh, G77 plus China Group. We just hosted a, a summit in Havana. It's the second South summit that we have hosted, plus two non-aligned movement uh, summits. Then Havana and Cuba in general has become a place to debate these subjects uh, for, for many years. But this year, we have witnessed not only several events uh, that show us uh, the changes uh, taking place in the world, but also the, the kind of proposals that regional groups, particularly Latin America, is putting forward in order to, to face the, the challenge. We do believe that the backdrop uh, of this situation is the growing loss of U.S. Uh, hegemony. During the panels, we have been talking mainly about Europe, China, but we are uh, 90 miles away from the big problem for us. And uh, we have witnessed that kind of change in the, in the role of, of United States and, and Washington at the planetary scale. This is something that even the scholars in the United States, uh, they do recognize. Uh, now we are, we are coming from the neoliberal globalization to decoupling, the risking, and all those concepts uh, they are uh, using these days. Uh, we just had the chance to attend, to participate at the uh, celebration in Beijing of the 10th anniversary, anniversary of the Belt and Road uh, Initiative. Uh, we have to say that October the 18th was, was a very particular day in our lives this year because we had the coincidence of uh, not only the Chinese uh, authorities, but uh, President Xi Jinping, President Putin was uh, president, and also all leaders from several other countries. And it was a meeting with 150 uh, uh, countries, I mean, representative, official, official representative, uh, people from NGOs, uh, business uh, people. The very same day, we had uh, the president of the United States supporting uh, any cleansing in uh, Tel Aviv. Uh, and that's the kind of event that shows you the, the two different worlds uh, we are living in. Uh, also, uh, the, the con I think it was mentioned before, the, the continuous non-compliance uh, with the agreements to prevent NATO expansion to the West has created a, a situation that the United States tried to use among on the developed uh, world to create a, like a turning point in terms of how blocks uh, or different groupings support uh, their policy. And we have to say that uh, they, they failed. Uh, it was mentioned here in, in a previous panel the way uh, the international community has uh, voted uh, in that regard. And the same thing happens with the, the, what uh, Israel is doing in, in, in Palestine these days. United States tried to rally several countries to uh, receive support, and they didn't. And beyond that, in, in the case of, of countries that they, they got some support, we have to mention, and we, we have to separate the official support of, from government from what the society in those countries are doing. And we have seen the, the rallies supporting uh, Palestine. Uh, In the, in the summit we just uh, hosted, uh, we, we have to say that it was uh, approved by consensus a political declaration. It was negotiated in New York, but it was finalized in, in Havana. And for those of you that haven't had the chance to, to read the document, I, my suggestion is to uh, you read it because it's, it's very clear in the objective, at least in this group and uh, 
of course, we cannot say that G77 plus China is the global south, but it is the largest group for uh, political uh, concentration in the world. It's 134 uh, countries. And in that document, by, by the way, the, the consensus was very easily to, to reach, but there is like a, a list of concerns uh, of uh, those countries and suggestions about how to, how to fix those, those uh, subjects. Uh, many times we have listened here the, the, the use of the word multipolar world. Well, I have to say that G77 and non-aligned movement are looking for a multilateralism. Uh, it's a relationship between equals, and as uh, many members of uh, the so-called Global South are very tiny countries, very dependent countries, uh, with uh, very small territories, very small populations, and what they are looking for is a world in which cooperation, which is, by the way, is a word, is a concept that is, uh, was mentioned several times on that uh, declaration, prevails. Uh, when, in our view, when you talk about poles, well, is uh, uh, the possibility of countries or government trying to impose their rules on others. We prefer to use the, the concept of uh, multilateralism. Uh, in our center, before coming to the, the, this event, we, uh, it's a collective effort. We review most of the uh, declaration that has been uh, approved or passed uh, during the G20 meeting this year, G7 meeting this year, European Union select meeting, G77. And we produce a dossier that we send in advance to uh, the, the organizers of the event, uh, which is very interesting for, for two reasons. Because in many cases, you have uh, countries, uh, first economies, that uh, they show that they don't have the capacity to respond to those needs, uh, to, to the request of the so-called uh, Global South. And at the other end, you have uh, these countries suggesting uh, what to do and how, how to do it. Uh, in one way, or the other, we, we feel that we need uh, new tools also to, to understand and to analyze uh, what is going on th these days. Uh, sometimes we are concerned, and, and many panelists here have been uh, talking about the concern about a potential war. Uh, we think that we, we need to analyze, analyze new, new kind of wars that are taking place that probably and not the conventional ones, and, and also to analyze if we are living in a peaceful world, uh, if we all enjoy peace in one way uh, or the other. Uh, in, that, in that regard, we are concerned, and by the way, uh, President Mbeki was the, the first mention in here, the, the concern of several countries in the South about the gap that will create the, the fourth industrial revolution. Every time we have had uh, that kind of, of advancements, technological advancement, the gap between well-developed countries and underdeveloped countries is, is larger. Now we are living under the same uh, a new situation in artificial intelligence, all the developments that are not benefiting all countries in, in, a, in an equal way. But uh, to finalize uh, our presentation, we are very concerned about what we can call new words, because uh, those are performed by actors that are nat national actors. Uh, some, many times they don't respond to, to a national uh, policy. Uh, they, they, become, they come from uh, private businesses, but they do have a growing influence. They are not regulated by any international uh, document, by the international rule, and they are uh, slowly uh, uh, getting more capacity to influence the, the, the status of, of the world affairs. Uh, one of them is probably well known, the, the so-called digital platforms and the way it influences politics all over the, the, the place. Um, many things have been uh, said on that regard. And the second one, I think a gentleman yesterday asked, uh, raised a question on the subject. I, I don't think it was fully responded, but it has to do with the, the potential possibility of having a, a biological uh, conflict, uh, a war, I would say. Uh, one of those uh, facts that uh, acted as, as an earthquake 
in the global south was the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, not only because of the victims and the effects, but also the way the many countries uh, saw uh, big pharma and, and some governments taking profit out of the pandemic. Uh, that put many governments to, in a position to think and to negotiate and to have a different view about the regional affairs and to know that the big powers will not come to, with a few exceptions, will not come to for the solution. In our case, as probably you know, we had the, to develop by ourselves a solution. Uh, Cuba produces uh, five vaccines that use not only at the national territory, we send plus than 50 uh, medical brigades to several countries, in Europe even, to two European countries, and we provide the service in the Caribbean region, even in those countries that uh, didn't get any support from the colonial powers. I mean, uh, I'm talking about territories that are uh, related to France or to UK, where Cuba provided that uh, service. But as part of the pandemic, uh, we saw many interests of laboratories creating the, the problem and the potential solution. And, and we do consider that this kind of uh, practices without a control without a ruling could create a new scenario that can be risky for uh, for everybody. In terms of G77, we are helping the, the authorities in Uganda that will host the, the next uh, meeting, uh, probably one of those uh, larger meetings that will convene most of the so-called uh, Global South. And uh, we don't have the solutions for all the problems, of course, but we do believe that it's important that uh, such a large number of, of countries have the opportunity to convene and to agree on, on potential solutions. Thank you very much.